Hey guys, and welcome back to another Revit Tools video. In this video, we're looking at the Join Tool. I think it's going to be a good time. There's a lot that we can do with the Join Geometry Tool. We'll even start to get into the unjoining and switching the order, but let's get right into it. I've got a really dirty looking model here. It's just it's something I threw together really quickly so we can start to get an idea of all the different kinds of joins that we're going to get throughout a 3D model when it comes to documentation as well as what our model actually looks like in 3D and how all of these elements, whether they're structural or architectural, are starting to come together and, and in the correct manner. Okay, so just give you a quick look at this. There's, <laughs> there's not a whole lot to look at, but it looks bad in some ways on purpose. You can see clearly I've left some of these model elements really more of a mess so we can go in and clean them up with the join tool. Okay, let's look at level one. Um, series of grids, I've got my columns. There's, again, nothing nothing to set up here in a particular way. I've got sections to go through, uh, doors and windows just so it looks like a building. Um, but let's start looking at the, the join tool here. Um, we're we're going to see a lot of the join tool come to life in section. Um, the way I've got it set up now is just basic section cut. Um, I've done nothing to the model other than just model the floor, walls, some columns, a roof, and I've, I've added a separate parapet here as another wall. You can go about this a, a million different ways, but as far as out of the box goes and joining, this is what you get. And by default, nothing really joins all that well except for walls. So let's start using the join tool in here and uh, particularly, let's, it, it's going to work best on connections because it's, it's going to be where you're joining. So I've got a, a roof here that's serving as a, a join element. So I'll, I'll first select that as a join element. And when I choose the parapet, it's, you're going to see that it, it makes a clear and clean join. And that's essentially what we want. Uh, when it comes to documentation, Revit does a great job of showing you as far as the result goes of the join tool, what you what you get and what you want. And when it comes to documentation, you want to see these darker lines on the outside, these uh, thinner lines, a, a lesser line weight on the inside. It really, it kind of increases the quality of the document as well as uh, making sense of what's actually happening and why. And you can get a better idea of the detail that's going on within the wall section here. So that was very basic. So we can go in and use the join tool again and you know, the unjoin works the exact same way. You, you hit unjoin and boom, there you go. It's, it's unjoined just like it was. I will go ahead and join that again just so it looks a lot better. Um, if we come over here, we've got the same idea. And basically what I'm doing, I'm gonna go around to all these wall sections and start joining everything so it, they start to look good. They look better. And this right here is just a generic roof, so there's no material, there's nothing showing up, there's no hatch pattern. That's why it looks a little weird. But uh, let's go to the other wall section and do the same thing. And once we go through this, I'm going to start adding some random walls here and there, and we'll come back to the section view, maybe add some ceilings along the way, and uh, get an idea of what those different elements do as far as joining goes. So, the same situation, parapet walls, parapet wall, that'll work for now. Let's go back to level one. I'm going to start adding just a few walls here and there, just some basic interior partitions. Yeah, that'll work. Um, it doesn't really matter where I'm putting them right now. Just gonna put them in a random place. So I have those that are going specifically up to level two. I'm gonna make these unconnected about seven and a half feet. So we'll do the same thing here. So we can start to see those in some of our sections. Let's drag this up here. We'll see it in our section view. So now let's go to this section view, see what we've got. So you can see our wall here. There, there's nothing special here. There's not a whole lot to do, but there is actually an opportunity to join walls to floors. So right here, when I choose this floor, 
I have the opportunity to join the wall to the floor and you can see I get that nice thin line to show that these two model elements are now joined. And the same will work with this wall when it comes to the floor as well as the roof. I can select the wall, the floor, the wall, the roof. I'm going to go ahead and unjoin those and I'll show you the multiple option. When I hit unjoin on that element, it's going to unjoin every model element that was joined to that wall in that case. So let's hit join. I actually have the opportunity to hit multiple join, which is really nice. I'll first select the element that I want to join multiple things to. So let's choose that wall. And then I can choose that floor. And you can see I still have that wall selected, which means I still have an opportunity to join different things to that wall. In this case, let's choose the roof, and it works just fine. I really like it to really like that part of the tool because I can just zoom all around one particular element and start to join multiple things together. I can do the same thing again with this bearing wall, with that floor, with that roof, and with that roof. Looks very nice. Okay. So let's let's go back to our level one floor plan. And uh, another big thing when it comes to joining is uh, you might have an opportunity to where you get some like, nasty looking walls. And I, I don't have a good way of describing this other than to just model some walls that you may not really do this on a normal basis, but there may be some reason you might have to. But if I, I model a wall there and... I model another wall right next to it, or basically on top of it in this case. There may be some reason why you have a couple of walls on top of each other, um, but generally you wouldn't. Although when you do encounter an instance like this, you actually are able to join walls to other walls. And that works beautifully in this case, and I say beautifully only because you could tell the join worked even though this doesn't look that great. And of course, the second that I pull these walls apart, they're saying, hey, you know, the highlight elements were joined. You would, would you like to unjoin them now? Clearly I would. This is another great opportunity to show what happens when I, I'm going to actually remove this window, but when I have a wall here and I've got another wall, I'll go ahead and change this wall to uh, finish face interior. I'll flip that around. So now I've got these two walls that are back to back for some particular reason. And now when I go in and put, let's actually, let's actually put a door. I'll put a door here. And then it's only going to cut this one wall. And of course, that may not be the case. That may not be what we want, of course, because this door should actually be cutting through this wall. So we can simply solve that by joining these two walls together. And the result of that is the door will then cut through the joined wall as well, which is the desired result. And that's exactly what we're after. You can see my floor under there. So that's what we want when it comes to that. So a couple things to know when it comes to wall joints. What's going to take precedent? Um, Structure is, particularly floors, are going to take precedent over just about anything. So to sh show that off, let's go to this section here. And just for the heck of it, I'm going to copy this floor up into the middle of the room there on the third floor. It's going to look completely silly because that's just the way it is. So I'll hit the Join tool, and because this is a floor and this is a wall, the floor is going to take precedent, which means the floor is going to be continuous. And this is ex exactly how this wall and floor system would be built. You would actually have the floor built out first, and you'd have the walls that come up on top of it. Now, this is different when it comes to columns, because columns obviously need to be continuous from top to bottom, which means they will go through floors. So columns take precedent over floors floors take precedent over walls and this is the result you get now 
Let's see what happens when I try and switch the order of the joining when it comes to this floor and wall. That does actually work. So Revit will allow you to, if for some reason you have this floor stopping on each side of this wall, you, you could join it that way. But by default, Revit will have it so that the floor joins all the way through and the wall is just sitting on top and below it as if it were constructed. And that's ultimately what you want. So you almost have to go out of your way to <laughs> make Revit not work like the real world, which is good. That's pretty good. If, we, if it didn't work that way, we'd find ourselves in a lot of trouble sometimes. Um, so let's go. I've got, I mean, let, let's put in some ceilings here. This is not, there's not a whole lot to see when it comes to the ceilings, but let's go to the level one. I will go to the ceilings, and yeah, let's just, just make some automatic ceilings there. That's fine. I'm not, don't always do that, but for this, let, that's fine. So let's go to our 3D view. I'm going to delete this floor now. And for the sake of joining, I will hide this roof there. So now... We've got a ceiling, and we've got a couple walls that are bearing through the ceiling. That's fine. So what happens when we go to the Join tool? We're going to join this wall to that ceiling, join those together. Basically, everything's looking good. It's working out great. Um, it's giving us some nice, clean lines. So when we go into Section, Go back to our section. You can clearly see that these walls are nicely, these areas are nicely joined. You can see I missed that side, or the smaller ceiling. This ceiling to this wall. This is really the condition that we want. You know these are nice and joined. If you see everything looking like that. Um, go back to 3D now, and I will. Reveal hidden with RH and unhide this model element, pressing EU on the keyboard. It's a shortcut. There it is. I hit RH again, and I specifically left this modeled incorrectly, I guess you could say, just so we could get an idea of what the joining does. And Now let's go over here and... I'll actually try and join this brick wall to this parapet. I'll first select that parapet and hit the brick wall. And clearly that's not really what I'm after. And I modeled this so we would incorrectly so we could see how this would result. Clearly that's not what we want. So now I can just simply go to the join and switch the join order. Select that brick wall and select the parapet wall. And look how nice that is. I, that's actually how I would like it to be modeled. So let's change things up a bit. I'm going to make this model a little more nasty. Let's trim this roof up. Delete these lines. I do not want to do that. And right now I'm going to go to my level 2 plan. Create a floor. And I'm going to choose the core boundary. And I'll show you some of the nice things that we can do with that in just a second. And I'll trim these up. Clearly, let's finish that. Trim it up there. No, I don't want to join. No, that's okay. So now, let's go to this wall section. So I've got this floor here, and something to note is because I chose that core boundary option, I can move this wall now, and this floor will move with it. Now everything else did not because I did not choose the. Um, to basically combine the cores and join the cores together. Um, I'm going to cancel that just for that, but when it comes to uh, moving walls that have cores, walls and floors that have cores bound together like these two do, you'll, you'll get the result where this floor will be modeled to the point, to, through the core of this wall, and when you move the wall itself, it will this floor will move with it. So I'm going to go to the join now, and I'm going to join this floor to the wall. And you can see, just like I explained when it comes to um, 
finishing the floor as a, a core boundary, like it's it's basically going to put it at the core, it, the join will perform that way too. The join will join all the way to the core. To better show this, let's go to level one. I'll make just a couple random walls out here, maybe some of these larger walls that look kind of funny. So by default, everything is joined to, going to join together, and they're going to join together specifically through the, the core structure. Now, obviously there's no core structure here. That's kind of funny. Let's use a different wall type. That's a stack wall, actually. That's why don't use a stack wall. Here we go. Here's a better example. We've got a wall here, wall here. Everything joins together. So you can see how the CMU flies right through and joins together very nicely. My guess is when I look at this wall that the CMU will be the only element in this wall type that is within the core boundary. And we can see it right here. Within the core boundary, the concrete masonry unit right there. And that's why we're getting that, that look that we do. There it is. Yep. It's within the core. Everything within the green here is within the core. Okay, now let's go back to 3D. And I'm going to take this bearing wall. I'm just going to extend it up and through. And I'll actually take this roof and I'll edit the footprint. Let's make these define the slope. And at the same time, hit OK. Yep, we've got a roof there. Let's edit the footprint again, and I'm going to offset this. Offset that by three feet. Great. There we go. Nope, I don't want to join that. So let's see. This is a great example because it looks terrible, but we'll see what the join tool does as we start to join these different walls and elements to the roof. So you can see what happens when you have the, the walls attached to the roof. I actually have a nice edge boundary of the wall meeting the roof where the roof actually is. So let's go to the join tool now. We'll start with the roof and be, the roof is going to act similar to a floor because it essentially is a floor. Um, we should see these nice lines that come in and around this this wall that's extended through because the, the basically the roof is going to take precedent. And there we go. See, we actually have the roof. If I isolate these two elements, isolate element, you can see how the roof is does not care that the wall is there. And of course, the second we bring that roof or bring that wall down, we'll get this unjoined and. Make sure you unjoin or you'll be stuck with that warning. So, okay, let's go and restore. And we can do the same thing for these former parapet walls. You can see those three came in joined already, and so we've got one that's still left unjoined. Because you can tell it's not joined because we don't have a nice edge. The joining is, half of it is for presentation purposes, the other half is so you could actually have a clean looking and clean functioning model. And there we go got those all joined together to that wall. So this looks like a complete mess, but I hope you learned something when it comes to wall joins and all kinds of joins, actually, when it comes to the join tool. Um, thanks for watching. If you have any criticism, please let me know. I will read all my comments and get back to you as soon as I can. I appreciate it. Thanks for watching.